Hey guys, today I want to talk about my real estate scripts, my real estate scripts, the scripts that I developed over the course of 15 years and making 100,000 cold calls. This is my baby. This is something that, that I developed over time, and it goes really deep. It isn't just words on a piece of paper that you read. I didn't just write this out, oh, this sounds good. This is blood, sweat, and tears um, developed over time and trial and error and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And it's, it's, it's so deep, right? There's so many implications to why every single word is on these scripts, and it's designed to not only you know get to the desired place of creating a relationship that's the goal that's the app that's the absolute goal uh, for me when I'm talking to prospects it's not to do a deal the deal is something that happens as a byproduct um, but but however it's designed to create the relationship build rapport also read the other person on the phone so there's a lot to these scripts it's not just, like I say, something you're reading off of a piece of paper. They're really designed to help you flow the conversation naturally and help you get to a place where you're talking to people as if they are your family. And that's what you want. You want people to feel like you're treating them like you would a family member or a very close friend and that you're giving them the same advice you would give your mom, your dad, your brother, your cousin, so on and so forth. So I want to dive into this um, and really kind of go deep with you on it and, and give you the philosophy behind my scripts, not just, you know, trying to figure out how to get them to do a deal today. Um, I also, also want to talk about the fact that, you know, a, a lot of uh, coaches and trainers are against a lot of the things that I do within my scripts and even who I'm calling. So I want to address all of this today um, in this video. And um, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you would like to download my scripts, they're in my free course, completely free. Just go to zero to diamond.com, zero to diamond.com, or click the link in the description below. Go to the free course that said, that's called Ricky Scripts. Go right there, download them. You can also watch videos of me calling prospects live right there on, on the website within those courses. Um, there's tons of, of, of uh, videos there, me calling prospects on, on there and on YouTube and really everywhere. Um, so again, this is coming from trial and error. I didn't get this from anywhere but my own blood, sweat, and tears. And I used this script as well as so many other agents have to make millions of dollars. And I sold 100 properties a year for eight years in a row as a single agent, as a byproduct of these scripts. Uh, I coach many, many agents that are in the top 10 in their local MLS, several that are number one in their MLS and even their state that use these scripts um, and follow the zero to diamond philosophies and principles and strategies. So this is tried and true. This isn't if um, this is, you know, how I built my business. Now I'm not saying go out there and build your business the way I built my business. I'm just saying, hey, here's a gift for me to you. This is how I did it. If you can use some of this in your business, great. If you think it's garbage, then that's great too. It doesn't matter to me. It's free. I'm just sharing with you what worked for me. If you want to go a different direction, listen to a different you know, guy or coach or, or a broker or something like that, go for it. Whatever works best for you is what I want you to do. Um, you know, it's all in the discovery of you know, um, how you want to build your business. Not everybody builds their business the same way. Right, so let's get into it. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go through the script and then I'm gonna break it down. And so my primary uh, lead gen was circle prospecting. You know, some coaches out there tell you, oh, that's that's a waste of time. Circle prospecting, which is basically calling uh, every owner in a subdivision that you want to dominate in. I don't know how in the world talking to property owners in a subdivision that you would like to sell in is a waste of time. You know, going in there and creating relationships, seeing what you can do to help people, introducing yourself, seeing what they, in fact, want to do now or later if they already have an agent, um, if you can stay in touch. I don't see how any of that is, is a waste of time. Well, we want leads that are ready to buy or sell right now. I mean, it's all the same stuff because when you give me that lead that you charged me a lot of money for, I'm still going to have to call them, and some of those are not going to be ready right now. I don't care what you say. And now we're right back to the exact same thing 
um, and with Circle Prospecting, I can just pick out the exact subdivision and just go ahead and call everybody. Um, you know, it's it's everybody. It's different. The different lead gens are different, and and they, you know, it takes a different, I guess, personality. But I enjoyed Circle Prospecting because I'm calling, thinking of myself as a volunteer worker doing community outreach to see what I can do to help people in my markets. Not everybody thinks like that. Um, most people, in fact, think in a way of, um, you know, I only want to do deals today. Well, I'm trying to figure out if somebody wants to do a deal today. I also want to create the relationship for the future if they don't, in fact, want to do a deal today. Um, I'm going to help them either way. So I'm really good at discovering if they want to do a deal now, if they want to do business later, if they don't want to do business at all. It's my job to uh, figure that out and to get them into my my database, whereas I can start sending them my weekly email um, that has really um, been the reason why I've sold so much property because I've accumulated so many relationships that get that weekly email that call me when they're ready and refer me all of their friends and family. Um, it's very simple, and so you'll find that a lot, most of my strategies, all of my strategies are extremely simple, and that's really what you have to do if you really want to scale. If you're doing too many things, it's really hard to be a master of all of them, and you end up, you know, not really uh, being very consistent with all of the different things if you're spread out. Um, having a couple things that you're really good at that really, uh, you know, can help you scale, that's really key. So calling property owners, whether it be expired for sale by owners, circle prospecting, if even if you have, you know, listen, I'm, I'm not I, Zillow, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I'm not telling you where to get your leads from. Um, you know that right now. I'm not telling you this is the way to do it. I'm just saying this is how I did it. And many other agents have done the same thing. So the script goes like this. Um, you know, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Hey, Mr. Johnson, Ricky Kruth here, local real estate agent here in Gulf Shores, Alabama. How you doing today? Cool, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Great. Well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but there was a house right around the corner from you that just sold. Didn't know if you knew about that. I was going to call and let you know and see if there's anything in the world that I could do for you. No? Okay, cool. Is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? I got you. Well, hey, listen, I'm sure you'll do something later on down the road, if not now. I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be hard if I just stayed in touch with you? Great. What's a good email for you? Is this your cell number? Okay, cool. Listen, again, my name's Ricky Carruth. I'm a local real estate agent at whatever company right here in Gulf Shores. Um, I'll stay in touch with you via email. You let me know if there's anything in the world I can ever do for you. You take care. Tell everybody I said hi, and we'll talk to you soon. Boom. It's really that simple. Now, um, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break down because every little piece of this script means something. Um, it's, again, it's not just a script that you're reading. There's transition points. There's reasons for every question. Um, and we're gonna, and there's a lot of respect that goes into this script. Um, and of course, you know, going deeper after you know me breaking this down, you know, it takes thousands and thousands of calls to get your tone down, your speed of voice, so on and so forth. There's a lot of people that use my scripts that don't have a lot of success in the beginning because they're still trying to map out, you know, how to talk to people, how to respond, speed of voice, tone, so on and so forth. All that goes so far. So, so, so far. Um, that's kind of the other equation to this. But all I can do is give you the basics and tell you you need to make thousands of calls to really master this. And then it's up to you to go do it. I can't go make the calls for you, unfortunately. If I could, I would. But nevertheless, let's break it down. So in the beginning, there's three questions. These three questions are very strategic um, because they're designed to get a response out of the prospect so that I can read them on the phone. I want to understand what their state of mind is. Now, just the fact that they answer the phone is incredibly positive right then and there. They're not answering the phone hoping for something negative. They're answering the phone hoping that something positive comes out of this and that you bring them some kind of value. A lot of times when people get mad, I would say more than half the time, people that end up you know, getting mad at you for calling or something like that, it's because you threw them off with your tone. Something you said in the beginning really you know, turned them away, and they threw that block up, and then you couldn't really bring them back. Um, however, 
uh, you know, there are some people that are just going to be mad no matter what. That's okay, too. Um, you know, our job is to go out there and filter through the population to find the people that want to do business with us, which is only going to be 20 to 30 percent of the people we talk to. The other 70 or 80 percent either don't like us, which is fine, or they already have an agent they're going to work with, um, something of that nature. But the 20 to 30 percent is who we're looking for, and that's who we're going to build our business on. And if we allow the uh, you know, 70 to 80 percent get to us and, you know, beat us down mentally where we don't even make our calls or do our prospecting or follow up or whatever the case may be, then we're just allowing the 70 percent of people who aren't even going to do business with us literally cave in our entire career. And now we're right back to working 40 hours a week on somebody else's business. Guys, Build your business. You got into this business, and it, the, the entire business is predicated on talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. It's really that simple. And most of us are scared to do the one thing that this business is 100% predicated on. You know, regardless if you, you know, connect with people and get your leads, you know, on social media or buy the leads or whatever the case may be, every lead generation avenue is just set up to collect data for you then to call them. And if you're not calling them, then somebody's, you know, you have a team member, an ISA, somebody in your group is calling them to initiate business and take the business to the next level, figure out what it is they want to do and why, put a game plan in place to help them do it. It's really this simple, guys. It's, we're overcomplicating the process. Once I understood how simple this business was, I was like, just give me a list of every single property owner in my market. And let me just get to work over here, guys. You know, give me that list and leave me alone. I'm fixing to go to town here. And that's what I did. I went to town. I called every single property owner I could. And before I knew it, I was the number one agent in my market. Um, just calling owners, creating friendships, figuring out what I could do to help people, doing a weekly email. That's it. That's all I did. I didn't do social media for my business. I didn't uh, you know, do a lot of this traditional stuff or net what in the modern world, tra traditional, <laughs> traditionally modern um, strategies that everybody's doing nowadays. Now, I do preach, do social media. I want, I, let me be clear. I do want you to do social media. I want you to go hard on social media. I want you to make your calls all morning and do social media all afternoon. Absolutely, 100%, without a doubt, you're going to get out there and do social media. It's free. You can connect with hundreds and even thousands of people in your market for free. You have to put sweat equity in, and you have to engage with them on the back end, and you have to call them on the back end, and you have to build those relationships. However... It's really easy uh, nowadays with social media to do this. So let me be very clear there. But back to the script, there's three questions in the beginning. There's a Mr. Johnson, right? It's just Mr. Johnson. It's not, is this Mr. Johnson? Or can I speak to Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson? Because you assume who's answering is Mr. Johnson. And you want to say it with a question mark type tone, Mr. Johnson? to see what they say. You're waiting for a response. As they respond, you're collecting data right there on how they're feeling, their tone, their speed of voice, all the above. Then the next question is, how are you doing? Okay, you're introducing yourself. You know, hey, Mr. Johnson, this is Ricky Carruth. I'm a local real estate agent right here in Gulf Shores. How are you doing today? And the how are you doing today, there's a lot of coaches and trainers and brokers and gurus out there that tell you not to say that. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And I think the reason they say that is because when they say it, they don't, they're not genuinely interested in how people are doing. They're just trying to do a deal today. Whereas when I say it, it's literally why I'm calling. Like the entire reason I'm calling is because I want to know how they're doing. That's the objective. That is really the entire punchline. I'm using whatever property I'm calling about as an excuse to get into a conversation to get to know this person. That is it. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous of somebody to say you shouldn't ask somebody how they're doing. That's disrespectful. You don't know them like that. I'm not going to get to know them either unless I know how they're doing today. Um, it's, it's hilarious to me when I hear people say that. But there again, um, I have different objectives, right? I'm not trying to do a deal. I'm trying to get to know someone. And so that actually, it actually makes sense that I want to know how they're doing versus if I'm doing just doing a deal, maybe I don't care how they're doing. I don't know. Somebody will have to explain to me why people say, <laughs> don't say that. Nevertheless, um, I believe very strongly in it, and it comes from my chest. It comes from my heart. I genuinely want to know how they're doing. That's why I say that. 
Um, but moving on, that's just another question. I'm waiting on a response, and I'm listening very hard, and I'm picking up data. Then I'm going to ask another uh, question that starts with a short statement, you know. Well, well great. Uh, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Right? Statement, question. It could be anything. It could be, you know, I'm enjoying the day. You're getting ready for New Year's, right? Me too. I'm enjoying the day. How was your Thanksgiving? You know, how about them? you know, bangles, you know, whatever. It could be so many things. There was something in the news that uh, there was some uh, serial killer running around one time. They finally caught him, and I made that my <laughs> my question. I forget what I said. It was a funny one. I'll, uh, if I remember it, I'll let you guys know. But it's a short statement and a question to get another response. This is also doing something else. It's helping people feel more comfortable that you're not going right into a, I'm going to, I you know, are going to sell my house. <laughs> you're going to sell your house today, sir. I'm not going right into that. They hear I'm an agent. They think automatically, oh, he's going to try to get me to sell my house. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to sell your house. I'm just trying to see how you're doing today. See if there's something I could do to help you. Um, I'm trying to get to know people in, in the market here. So trying to connect with people. Nevertheless, those three questions give me a lot of data. I know how to continue the conversation and make the conversation flow nicely and naturally from that point. Now, I'm not going to ask them if now's a good time to talk or, you know, if now's a good time or all that other stuff where I'm asking a question of that. I'm just going to make a statement because they answered the phone. Answering the phone told me that now's a good time. I don't have to ask them if now's a good time, but I can respect their time by saying, um, cool, well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but that's the transition right there, right? That's the transition. You know, they say how they're enjoying the day, I'm enjoying the weather, blah, blah, blah. And when it comes to that awkward point where we're done with that part of the call, then you continue to make the conversation flow and you're ready to hit that first transition. Great. Well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but that's it. That's the transition right there. And it respects their time. It transitions the conversation into the reason you're calling, which is about real estate. And you're able to flow it from there. Now, from there, it could be anything depending on who the lead is. If they're an online lead, social media, for sale by owner, circle prospecting, expired, sphere of influence, referral, whatever you're calling about. Let's say it's circle prospecting. You know, great. Well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but there was a house right around the corner from you that just sold. Didn't know if there's anything in the world that I could do for you today. Right. And so I'm giving them market information. Look at what I've done. I've I've asked questions. I'm not rushing into a sale. I'm making them feel comfortable with me. I'm respecting their time. I'm transitioning to value a house right around the corner sold from you. And now I'm asking them simply if there's something I could do to help them, not if they would buy or sell a house today. And so it just kind of continues here. You know, and that could go one of two ways. They could say, yeah, we're looking to do something or no, we're not looking to do anything. Either way it goes, we're ready. If they say they're looking to do something, we're going to continue to do discovery there. Oh, well, are you working with an agent on that? You know, what are you looking to do? Why are you looking to do it? You go down that path, and I'll do another video on on that path as far as if somebody says I'm ready to do something. But if they say they're not ready to do something, okay, great. Well, listen, let me ask you this. Is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? That's the transition. Right. That's your second transition. Now, now, look, if they say yes, they're looking to do something or no. Either way, I'm asking them if they're working with an agent because I need to know right up front. Are you working with somebody? That way, I kind of know where I stand in this equation. They may have somebody that's really close to them. They're going to work with, you know, it kind of knocks me out of the ball game. That doesn't mean I'm going to quit talking to them. Right. If they say they have an agent, I'm still and and they're not looking to do anything, but they have an agent. If they were, I'm still going to ask if it's okay to stay in touch and get their email. I'm not going to give up on that. People switch agents all the time. At the same time, I'm not trying to steal that client either. I just want the opportunity to stay in touch, send them information. If they get value out of my information I send every week and they use their agent, I'm fine with that. Right. If years later and something happens and they need me, I'm here to help. Whatever happens, right, it, it's cool with me. But when they say no, hit my transition, great. Well, let me ask you this. Is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? You know, whether they say yes or no. Let's say they say yes. Great. Who is it? I may know them. They tell you who it is. You tell them it's a great agent. They're in good hands. And look, you'd still love the opportunity to stay in touch with them. Would that be okay? And so you ask if it's okay to stay in touch before you ask for the email address. Very important. 
right? Is it okay if I stay in touch with you? Great. What's a good email? Is this your cell number? Everything I said earlier, right? If they say no, they don't have an agent. Okay, cool. Well, listen, um, I'm sure you'll do something in the future, right? You'll buy or sell a house at some point in the next 5, 10, 15 years. I don't know. But I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I just stayed in touch? Cool, great. What's a good email? Cell phone number. Again, my name is Ricky Carruth. I'm a local real estate agent right here in Gulf Shores. I'll stay in touch with you via email. If there's anything I can do for you whatsoever, please reach out. I'm happy to help. And so, I mean, it just flows all the way. And it's designed, really, guys, this is a script I just went through. But it's designed to kind of veer off of this script as you get to certain places where you start, like like if they say they want to do something, well, that just veers it all the way down into discovery mode. You may veer into a conversation about the weather. You know how many conversations I had that, that were ended up being like five, ten minutes worth of weather talk before I even got to the point of what we're talking about, or even talked about the weather and veered into another subject before I even got to, you know, that we talked to for a, talked about for a while before I even got to the part about what why I'm calling. This is all relationship development. And as far as asking for the email, um, this is like after I've determined that we've got good rapport, you know, I've determined if they do or don't want to do anything, um, you know, they're, lo- they're not looking to do anything now, maybe in the future, and they want to stay in touch with me. Of course, I'm going to get the email. I've heard coaches say that's a bad strategy to get the email address. And the reason they say that is because they feel like people are just focused on getting the email, getting the email, getting the email. But I feel like what their coaching is getting people to just focus on the appointment, 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 or deal, deal, deal. And so you're going to have that problem no matter what with agents just kind of zeroing in on trying to get that whatever the goal was at the end of the at the end of the call. But that's not really my goal at all. My goal is to try to create rapport to try to show them through my communication that I care about them. That's my goal. The email is just something at the end I can use to continue that great first impression with them through my incredible weekly emails. So that's kind of where I stand on it, guys. I just went through the whole script and really kind of broke it down for you why I do everything within my scripts. You can use this for any prospect whatsoever. Um, So again, you can download the scripts at zerodiamond.com. Um, you can also, uh, if you want to look and see how I do the weekly email, I've got a course there at Zero to Diamond called Start Your Weekly Email, where I do tutorials and break down the entire weekly email if you're interested in that, along with the 60-day challenge and everything else that I offer. It's all completely free, so why wouldn't you? It's also a social media platform that you can use to connect with other agents in the Zero to Diamond program, so feel free to to join there and let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. I'm going to link a video right here. Um, This is an older video about that I did a while back about everything I learned from making 100,000 calls. So I haven't seen it in a while. I'm going to link it right here for you, though. It's just kind of a blast from the past. Hope you enjoy that. And if you, again, if you need anything or have any questions, shoot a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll talk to you guys on the next video. Take care. I want to. I want to. Look. I-35 with the top down, quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Like